Hi, welcome to Jeremy's Tech Channel, and today we're checking out Gecko Linux. In my research in looking at rolling release distributions, I reviewed recently OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. Very cool, very neat administrative tools through the YAST applications. And I just thought they was super cool. And I had a lot to learn. And when I was doing that, someone suggested Gecko Linux. Now Gecko Linux is directly connected to OpenSUSE. And we'll take a look at the website here, see where it's connected, what makes it, and what sets it apart from OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. I also did a review yesterday on PC Linux OS, a distribution that is doing its own thing and it's it's also a rolling release. So when I first got into Linux, the only rolling release that I was very aware of was Arch-based systems. And now I'm coming to realize there's a lot more going on. So we'll go over to the website here. We'll read a couple of things about what separates Gecko Linux. We'll go into the live environment, check out the install process, and then we'll poke around a little bit and see how well it responds and kind of see who is this for. Here's the website, Gecko Linux, Linux for detail-oriented Geckos. Gecko Linux is a Linux spin based on the OpenSUSE distribution, which focuses on polish and out of the box usability on the desktop. It is available in static based on OpenSUSE Leap and rolling based on OpenSUSE Tumbleweed Editions. Now we're checking out the Tumbleweed spin today. It talks about some of its features here, but what I wanted to take a look at is what sets it apart from OpenSUSE. It says that it comes as an offline installable live DVD USB image for static and rolling editions, whereas OpenSUSE has a non-live DVD USB installer, a net installer image, or Tumbleweed Live DVD or USB with net installer options. Pretty much everything is available to you without needing network connection, offers customized editions optimized for different desktop environments. Whereas OpenSUSE requires the user to know how to install patterns and packages for different desktop environments. Gecko Linux comes pre-installed with common niceties such as proprietary media codecs, Whereas OpenSUSE for legal reasons requires users to know how to add additional repositories and which packages to add. Okay, that's nice. It prefers packages from the Pac-Man repo when they're available. Also, it looks like it comes pre-configured with what many would consider to be a good font rendering. Whereas many users find the OpenSUSE's default font configuration to be less than desirable. Gecko Linux does not force the installation of additional recommended packages after system installation. Whereas OpenSUSE pre-installs patterns and automatically installs recommended package dependencies, thus causing many additional and possibly unwanted packages to be installed the first time the package manager is used. Gecko Linux pre-installed packages can be uninstalled with all of their dependencies, whereas OpenSUSE's patterns often cause uninstalled packages to be automatically reinstalled. Gecko Linux does not use or pre-install package kit, which is known to interfere with the underlying zipper package management system. Okay, so they have essentially kind of tweaked things to their liking, even making this very well polished operating system even more polished and focused for some, as he calls it, detail-oriented people. Now, one of the beautiful pieces here that they have is they have multiple desktop editions, more than just what you're used to seeing. You'll see the ones you normally know. You'll see Cinnamon, XFCE, Gnome, Plasma, Mate, LXQT, I almost got that one. Gecko Linux Rolling Budgie and Pantheon. They also have a bare bones edition. So I decided to get the Pantheon desktop environment. The Pantheon desktop environment, as we're going to see, developed originally by the Elementary OS team. You might have checked out Elementary OS and probably know the desktop environment. It's GNOME-like and is very Mac-like. I wanted to check it out. So one of the major people in developing elementary OS left recently. And so maybe you love the desktop environment, but maybe you're just kind of checking out and see what else has that desktop environment. Well, we're gonna get a chance to see that today. Here we are in the live environment with the Pantheon desktop environment. It looks very Mac-like. One of the things I love is transparency. <laughs> It looks very nice to me personally. You've got your dock down here, the YAS software, and we're gonna check out some of those YAS pieces. Some of the things that I learned from my last look at OpenSUSE Tumbleweed was some of the labeling was confusing for someone like myself. Becoming more aware, we'll walk through those pieces together, see what's different between OpenSUSE and Tumbleweed, check out this pretty cool looking desktop environment, and see if it's for us. I'm gonna go ahead and get going on this installer. It says Calamaras, which means it's an installer that a lot of distributions use. And we're gonna get through this pretty quickly. Yes, yes, 
This is great. We already have BetterFS as our file system, which I love. I'm gonna set up no swap. This virtual machine has 16 gigabytes of RAM dedicated to it and a course. Here we go, setting up a user, adding a password, and then it's always good to check out the summary before you hit install. Maybe you accidentally chose the wrong time zone. I know those things can be fixed later, but some things may not be as easy, like partitioning your drive. So just make sure you have everything that you need, and then when you're ready, hit install. If you need to change something, you can hit the back button here. I'm gonna hit install. So this installer is already different than what the Tumbleweed installer was. It was a pretty slow install. Now remember, I did have to do most of this stuff because I chose the net installer. And I found out later there's a hidden menu selection that you can do to choose the packages that you want to have installed. And I didn't know that at the time, but if you choose to go with OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, just be of note of that, but everything here is already on the ISO, so it should be a pretty quick install. I like having some things packaged together with things that you're gonna use regularly. Having those codecs already available for me is attractive to me. If we get through this today and you don't like this desktop environment, no sweat. You've got your classics like KDE and GNOME. You also have some lighter versions like LXQT. You might really like Cinnamon and there's just a lot of choices. I haven't uh, taken a chance to do a walkthrough with Budgie yet but it's something I want to check out soon. This installer is already almost done. That is quite nice. Get the install done. It says it's removing one package and it's all done. Now let's restart. A lot of times I have to kind of speed up that piece, but I didn't have to. You can see that Tumbleweed logo there. I'm gonna boot up. It looks like the kernel is 5.16. And here we are with the login screen. And we are greeted here with a welcome screen. So we have a basics guide here. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that real quick. And it opens up a web browser, which is something you probably know. It is the Firefox. It goes directly to the Tumbleweed website, which is great because that's where things are based with Gecko Linux. Outstanding, gives you the basics of what you need. Just wanted you to see that. You can go ahead and get your look chosen. You can choose a default or a dark. And also you can choose your color, accent color, if you will. Uh, this says automatic based on wallpaper. Okay, let's see if that actually happens. We'll choose a couple different color wallpapers and see if it changes. Next, get your nightlight piece here that will make the display a warmer color at night to help prevent eye strain and sleeplessness. They call this housekeeping. It will allow you to automatically delete after 30 days to save space and help protect your privacy, specifically some old temp files, trash files, and if you chose to get downloaded files deleted automatically, you can. Online accounts, you know, your next cloud account, those kinds of pieces, you can set up here. And now it says we're ready to go open system settings. Get started. All right, I'm gonna get started. Now this desktop environment, as a veteran Mac user, this already has a sense of feel that I like. But what I wanna do is check out that piece that said that it would change some accent colors based on the background image. And I don't know how it would do that. So, and I don't even know where it, I would see it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the wallpaper and I'm gonna see what happens when I choose something not green and see if I can notice. Okay, see the highlighting around this here? That's like a yellow, okay? Now let's see what happens when we change it to something like this. Does it change? It does, it changes it to a gray. Now, that's a detail piece. That's a detail piece within the Pantheon desktop environment, but I can see people who are moving to Gecko Linux, that might be a little detail that you might love. Okay, so I'm gonna choose this one. This one looks very nice to me. That functionality of changing your accent color with your wallpaper is something that does work in Pantheon desktop environment on Gecko Linux. Let's just walk through basically this desktop environment. Let's make sure we catch what resources we are using and check out that YAS software stuff because it is awesome, guys. We've got up in the upper left-hand side, you've got an applications launcher right here. And it looks like you can search for things right here. If I type in LibreOffice, 
LibreOffice is there, or you can go through and search your menu right here. It doesn't change when you hover over it. You do need to click. You need to be intentional. But something else I'm noticing here, you click this view as grid, and now it is a more icon-based looking menu or system launcher or whatever you wanna call it. It also says you can type in control two or control one. Let me try control two. Okay, control one. So you have those shortcuts if you prefer one or the other for whatever task you are looking for. That is great. Another piece here for the Pantheon desktop environment is this calendar. This calendar is very much a Mac-like calendar. I know because I use one daily at work and integrate it with my Exchange contacts and iCloud and all those kinds of things. This is a great layout for a calendar. Trust me, it is awesome. By the way, I did choose a dark theme and the calendar is now dark themed as well. If that matters to you, you can see that it does it. I also wanna check a couple other pieces here that are down here. You've got your show desktop, which obviously you've got your web browser up, any window up, you click that and it puts it down. Now you can show your desktop quickly. It's a nice little quick shortcut. Clipboard is currently empty, but if you start copying and needing to paste things, that clipboard is there. You have this multitasking view here, which is very GNOME-like in its setup. So we'll go over here and now it's on a dis different one. I have these two workspaces and an icon defined on what is on those workspaces. Just so you can see if you use workspaces, it's there for you. System settings, this is system settings specifically for the Pantheon desktop environment. You can see here, You've got your displays, your sound, your applications. Let's see here. This is where you can choose your default pieces here. So if you choose a different text editor, like code instead of LibreOffice Writer, you can change it there. You can have specific applications launch at startup and then give certain pieces permissions. Very nice power management printers tweaks. This is how to change some of the GTK themes. If you wanted to move away from what you selected at the beginning, you can pull in some of these, which is nice. I am going to quickly show you a change here and see if I can get something. There we go. Now you can see what that looks like. But that's how you know. Your icons, your cursor, your sounds, all of those pieces, these appearance pieces, are here for you if you care. Bluetooth is already there and ready to go. You've got some screen time and limits for kids. So you can set up users on specific screen times. And once again, this is still just dealing with the Pantheon desktop environment, which is getting me pretty excited because I am feeling at home, whether you like the look or not, whatever. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and find a terminal and you can see they added a little bit of transparency on this terminal and just see what is available. So it looks like almost a gigabyte of memory is being used and it's running just fine and snappy. You see my CPUs there idling along, not really feeling much at all, which is great. Also of note, because they decided to install some proprietary things and some media codecs, you can see there is the HP device manager. So if you have a printer and need a printer, it is there for you, ready to go. I'm gonna check out this other system monitor that they have. It does look familiar. And this is what happens when you're using another application like the system manager or the system resources monitor. And you can see what's going on. 1.3 gigabytes of memory is being used, processing and keeping this application open. That gives you a sense of a couple of things. We've got Yast and Yast software. Now labeling of some things, it, this is actually the zipper package manager that gets used, but this is the YAS software management tool. And that was confusing for me the first time. Another thing that was confusing for me that I'll show later, they have the YAS bootloader. And as for an admin to work with the uh, bootloader, and I was like, oh, they must have their own bootloader. But you 
it was grub that was installed and grub can be used. And you'll see that that is what is being used here with Gecko Linux. Right now, it is getting things initialized because remember, everything that was installed was installed offline. So this is the first time I believe we're really connecting to some of these repositories that we're gonna need to install software. It's very important for me to know when I'm looking at an operating system, how to install a package, how much resources is it using? How does it feel when I'm using it? What's the workflow? And is it gonna have the things that I need? This is some things that it is asking me to install or update. It says installation summary. I am going to go ahead and click accept and let this do this. If I need to, I will speed this up quickly so that you don't have to watch this go through, but it's going through pretty quick and it's complete. That was quick, finish. So now I'm gonna search for a package. I'm going to search for Caden Live. I see Caden Live here. I'm gonna go ahead and select it, click accept and it's telling me the dependencies that it's going to need to install. And now it is going to install Caden Live. It's 135 packages because of those dependencies. Installing packages for Caden Live. And we're finished. Once it got the files downloaded, it took no time to get that installation done. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to check and see where it would put it. I put it here in sound and video, Caden Live. Let's open it up. There's a couple of warnings here and there's an optional piece missing, some plugin and an icon theme. I'm not worried about that. And here it is, ready to go, ready to use. So that's how you install a package. Uh, very simple, very easy using what they have labeled here as YAST software. Now let's go and check out some more specific things for why you might want to use an OpenSUSE based distribution. This YAS control center is pretty awesome. I really loved it the last time I saw it and they've changed some labels here and I, I really like this because it helps make sure I'm not confused. So right here it says configure the bootloader. And when I was looking at OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, it said yes bootloader. And it was just saying it's the yes admin tool to work with your bootloader. But here, we'll click here. And now you can deal with your boot code options. You know, choose your grub, you can edit, you can deal with the kernel parameters and make things happen which is great. A partitioner here, network settings. You know, look guys, this might be my favorite grouping of tools that you would use to manage a system. They have this piece here, which is called sudo or sudo, however you choose to say that. For some reason, it keeps wanting to draw the window behind. I don't know why. You can sit there and work with your group for sudo. Thank you. Let's click on the firewall, configure firewall. If you haven't configured it yet, like I have not, it looks like it still needs firewall D installed. So it will go through and install firewall D. You probably should have a firewall configured in some shape, form or fashion, but it's nice. Maybe you want to use a different one. Maybe you don't want to use this one. And here you go. Now you're ready to configure your firewall. Security center, user and group management. All right, you can check out the systems log, file system snapshots, okay? This is very cool, manage BetterFS, be able to get a snapshot of your file system and go back to previous snapshots. This is wonderful and already available. Now, if you don't have OpenSUSE or a SUSE based system, there's TimeShift, which can do some functionality for you that might be able to appease that need. I also think it's interesting that this icon down here is like a like an aardvark or something. I don't know. This piece here is amazing. I really do love the YAST piece. We checked out the file manager quickly. It's a tabbed situation here for your files. It also has this layout here, which is very similar to a Mac layout on your bookmarks side, which is nice to me. I really do like that. I'm up in the bar here, let's just make sure we've caught everything. This is something that centered notification and calendar area, your sound, network, 
your notifications, and your power situation. This is laid out well. Some of the things that we won't be able to check out today, I don't have a side-by-side -side right now to check out the font rendering with Gecko Linux with OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. Maybe you will notice, maybe you will not, but what I will say is that I can tell there is a lot of detail that is put in here. Everything feels very polished. I really felt really good working around OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, they took that nice polished operating system and went and went and polished it some more and made it more usable and kind of just managed it even more to be a upfront, ready to go operating system. Who is this for? Um, I think most people who have been introduced to Linux and feel pretty good about being in Linux can use this system. Now, I chose this Pantheon desktop environment. You may not like that desktop environment. No sweat, they got a whole bunch to choose from that you might like and prefer. I really do appreciate this and I really do appreciate the Pantheon desktop environment and I appreciate that the Gecko Linux team gave us some other options than the regular options. If you like the Pantheon desktop environment or you like the Budgie desktop environment, but you really like that YAST software and administrative piece, you really need to check this out. For me, I did a review on Deepin OS and I loved the desktop environment. I love the simplicity of it, but the operating system that I got, I, I guess I downloaded a mirror that, I, I don't know, it didn't work. It was a little frustrating and I want to review it again, but it made me think, well, maybe there's other options with that desktop environment. And with Pantheon, you have this. So if you're used to elementary OS, you can use Pantheon and on top of that, Elementary OS likes to procure their software that they want available for you. And some people might consider that a little restrictive with the Pac-Man repos that are available here. You have a plethora of software packages to install and get a nice sense and feel of what an operating system can be. And Gecko Linux is definitely getting two thumbs up from me I'm gonna keep this on my virtual machine and I'm gonna check it out some more. Maybe check out a couple more of the desktop environments and see what might be right for me. Good job, Gecko Linux. Thanks for a great experience in my walkthrough. I'll see you guys later.